Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today um, for our second Giving Day for Apes webinar this year. Um, we're going to get started in a minute. We'll have a, um, a little bit of time for a couple more participants to join. Um, for those of you who are here, we'd love for you to just type into the chat your name and your organization you're representing today, um, and we'll get started in a minute. Awesome, we'll get started. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for joining us today for our second webinar, uh, Planning and Sharing Your Campaign. Uh, we have a bunch of wonderful slides to cover today, lots of good content. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started. I do wanna let everyone know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted in the participant toolkit so that you can, um, sorry, the asset uh, library so that you can refer back to it uh, if needed. Um, and the slides will also be available for download as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So to get started, my name is Sarah. Um, I am the project manager for Giving Me for Apes, uh, and I help Jackie. Um, and I am with Mighty Cause, which is the platform provider for the event. So I'll pass it over to you, Jackie, so you can say hello. Oh, thank you. Well, hi, everyone. I'm glad that you could join us. Um, we have a lot of information uh, to cover today, kind of thinking strategically about putting together your campaign especially in light of prizes this year, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. So I guess we'll get started. Awesome. Um, so just like Jackie said, our overall goal today is to talk through some different uh, strategies to help you plan your campaign, um, and then talk about different ways to help you prepare to share your campaign, share your message with your donors and your supporters. Um, and of course, we will also emphasize the support resources and the participant toolkit and the materials available to you. Um, and then at the very end, we'll have some Q&A. Feel free to send your questions through the Q&A bubble, um, or you can post them in chat. Uh, and here we go. Um, so to get started, I'm going to pass it back to you, Jackie. Thanks. All right, we're just going to do a quick overview of where we are with the event. Of course, Giving Day for Apes is going to be on Tuesday, October 3rd, beginning at midnight um, Eastern Daylight Time and going through 11.59 p.m. that day. The early giving is starting uh, at midnight Eastern Time on September 11. And just as a reminder, all of the online donations that you receive from September 11 through October 3rd get added to your leaderboard totals and your giving event totals. Um, if you have not yet registered for the event, even if you have participated in previous years, you do need to register and it's right there on the homepage, givingdayforapes.org, um, fill that in. When you're registering, you'll see that there is a reference to the rules of the event and terms of participation, and those are available for you to review. Um, there's also a number of FAQs on the website. There's FAQs for participants and donors that explain a lot about who can donate, uh, how you donate. Um, and this year we did create a document, a participant toolkit, which is downloadable from the Giving Day website. that also has a number of FAQs in it talking about things like matching grants, peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. There's some quick instructions on how to update uh, your page. I know Sarah's going to be talking about some of those today, but if you just want to go back and say, well, you know, how did I, how do I have to do that? That participant toolkit will answer a lot of your questions. And then finally, um, when thinking about preparing your campaign, we would ask you to think about the prizes, um, understanding the prizes, taking advantage of the prizes available. Some of them are only available during certain hours. Some of them are only available for certain regions. 
We have now put all of the prize information and descriptions and schedule up on the Giving Day Graves page. It went up last night. Um, and so you will see all of those prizes, the hours when the power hours are, the hours when the golden tickets are. And a week from today, we're gonna to have our third and final webinar where we are gonna go in detail through prizes and answer your questions. Um, one prize we will talk about today is the storytelling prize this year, and we'll go over that in a couple of minutes. Um, but I'll turn it back to you, sir. Alrighty. Um, so moving into kind of getting the wheels rolling, kind of starting to plan your campaign, um, one of the first things that we emphasize for organizations is identifying your why. Um, so big picture, this is why you're fundraising, different goals, different themes that you're kind of campaigning towards, um, thinking about some different questions uh, and trying to think of how you would answer them is going to help you kind of gear your campaign, kind of help you figure out your strategy. Um, so some of these questions are, is your organization fundraising for some specific part of your mission? If so, what is it? Um, what are your funds that you raise going to help you accomplish? Uh, we're going to talk a bit, like Jackie said, about storytelling. So figuring out very clearly what your why is, what you're trying to fundraise towards. This is all going to help you create a very clear message um, that is going to help donors essentially decide to give to you. Donors love transparency. They want to know how the money that they donate is going to help you uh, accomplish different goals. So figuring out your why is really uh, critical to your campaign. Um, if no, how are the funds you're raising going to help your overall mission? Uh, if you don't have something specific you're trying to accomplish, maybe you're just trying to, you know, do a general fundraising campaign. Um, but in, in general, you want to figure out specific needs, um, what the money is going towards so that you can add this to your about page. So that's your organization profile and giving day for apes. Um, and then additionally, we'll have some examples, but we also offer you on your organization page a custom tab and a lot of organizations make use of that to kind of dig in deeper into the goals for the campaign. So you can, you know, you can figure out the best way to lay out your messaging on your profile page, um, but you do have an about section and then you have a custom tab. Um, and we're going to talk more about kind of building your page and customizing it, but I do always like to encourage organizations to take a peek at the search and look at other organizations and just see how they lay out their information, how are they using their custom tabs, um, so you can kind of see how people break out their messaging. Um, and then from our first webinar uh, that we had, I also wanted to paste in the Giving Day for Apes, the event goals, um, to help you kind of drive your why as well. So things to think about. So Giving Day for Apes, the goal this year is to raise awareness um, of the threats to apes and their habitat, the reasons why ape sanctuaries and rescue centers are needed, and the ways in which the public can make a difference for apes. Um, these are all things that you all are working on, you know, every day, and sometimes the messaging uh, for you can feel maybe repetitive, um, but just because you're in there doesn't mean the donors know what you're doing. They don't know what your, you know, what your essential needs are. Um, so kind of framing your messaging that is clear and concise to help donors understand uh, what it is that you're doing and what the money is going to be used for is going to be really helpful for your campaign success. Um, we also like to mention setting specific goals. So these are, we call them SMART goals. So when you're thinking about your why um, and you're thinking about goal setting and how you can, you know, see the success of your campaign, you're going to want to set specific goals, um, something, you know, something detailed, you know, what are you going to be doing with the money, something like that. Um, measurable goals, so this is something that you can track. Uh, if you need a certain amount of funding to do a certain project, um, how are you going to be tracking, you know, your progress towards that goal during the event? Um, attainable is really important, so really reflecting on, you know, what is going to be attainable during this year's event? Um, you know, you might want, you know, $100,000, but is it a realistic attainable goal for this year? You'll have to consider that. Um, and just realistically, what can you accomplish with your goal within the specific timeline of giving day for apes? Um, and then also thinking about what's relevant, what is uh, important to your organization. 
how does the goal align with your mission, your larger, bigger picture of objectives, um, and things like that. And then also, of course, time bound. So keeping your organization accountable. Um, when do you want to accomplish it? You know, ideally, your goal is going to be through the Giving Day for Apes period. Uh, it can always, you know, be extended, but you know, your messaging is this is our goal for Giving Day for Apes, and this is how you can help us accomplish it. Um, and then kind of really breaking out those pieces. Um, so once you have your overall goals, these can be monetary and non monetary, by the way. So these can be, you know, how much money do you want to raise? And also how many, you know, donors do you want to get gifts from? Do you want to get a new amount of new donors this year? Uh, do you want to have, you know, peer to peer fundraising be a new goal this year? Um, all of these kind of different aspects of your campaign are going to help drive your your why and your messaging. Um, and then once you have your bigger picture goals, uh, you can then break them into what we call mini goals, and those will help be speaking points during your campaign. So if you have, you know, a goal to raise, say, $5,000, um, you know, by midday, you would break that into a mini goal of hopefully $2,500. Um, so these are speaking points because you can, you know, drive momentum during the campaign. You can tell your donors, hey, we're halfway to our goal. We need, uh, you know, two thousand more dollars by midnight. What can you all do? Can you share this post with, you know, two friends? Can you email it to your family? Um, things like this. So big picture, smart goals, and then breaking it out into mini goals that help drive messaging during the event. Um, and then moving into uh, actually making the ask to donors. So once you have your goals, you have, you know, different milestones, mini goals that you're aiming for, uh, you're going to need to obviously make the ask to your donors and your supporters and let them know how they can help you out during your campaign. Um, so, and I want to mention this is everything from making the ask for money to making the ask for, you know, supporting you in non-monetary ways. So that's through peer-to-peer -peer campaigns or just sharing links um, to help get the messaging out uh, into everyone's networks. So keeping that in mind, um, specifically for donations, you're gonna wanna provide an amount that you're looking for. Uh, donors sometimes don't know specifically what you need and what would be you know, an effective amount to give you. So creating specific asks, and they don't need to be huge asks. You don't need to you know, ask people for $50 each, you can kind of be uh, considerate in how you ask and frame your um, ask. So especially based on the group that you're talking to, um, when we say use psychology, frame the ask. So you need to think about what group you're talking to. Are you talking to, you know, your volunteers? How much would you ask them? Make sure you thank them for their support throughout the year before you jump into asking for money. Um, are you asking, you know, a large donor who repeat gives to you year over year? How do you want to frame that ask? Do you want to ask them to outdo themselves? Um, what would that look like? Um, and then also including a sense of urgency. So when you're thinking about when and how to make the ask, you want to make sure you let them know when they should give. Hey, early giving is open. You can give now. Um, hey, we have a prize we're trying to win please give during this hour of the day, um, things like that. So including a sense of urgency and a timeliness. Um, I also have, if you have a match live, that's a great you know time to let your supporters know, hey, we have a match live, this is a great time to give. Um, and then always making it super easy for your supporters to donate to your organization. That means including a button, um, keeping it short, keeping it simple, linking to your organization profile page, um, social media, adding, you know, a button to your social media, uh, trying to streamline the steps it takes for a donor to make a gift. So you don't want them to go to your, you know, Giving Day for Apes website and then have to search your organization. That's a lot of steps. So making sure you have direct links to your profile page, direct links to your um, donation form, um, and then getting creative with your ask. Um, you can tell a short, compelling story. Feel free to do that. But we definitely want you to kind of make it, you know, short, sweet. People are typically, you know, on their phones when they're getting emails or asks for donations. Um, and we all know how quickly and easy it is to scroll on to the next thing. So less is more. Um, just make sure it's compelling. So if that's a specific story, if it's a specific picture, 
um, get creative in that way. And then I also want to mention, don't be afraid to ask more than once to donors. Um, a lot of them are so happy to give again, especially if they know why you're asking again. So if they gave during early giving and you're hesitant to ask them to give during, you know, uh, the day of, don't be afraid to ask again. Just let them know, hey, we see that you gave during early giving. We're super thankful. We have a power hour we're trying to win. Um, is Please make a gift, you know, click here to make a gift. Uh, if they know that you're close to achieving a goal, they're also very happy to give again. If you're, you know, 10 donors away uh, from, you know, a prize or something like that on the leaderboard, and they know that they can make a gift to help you, then they're usually more than happy to give again. Um, Jackie, do you want to say anything on the slide? Um, yeah, I just wanted to jump in with a couple of things. I think it's important to uh, break things down. Um, you know, as Sarah was saying, you can tell a short, compelling story um, and, you know, you can set a dollar goal, but think about breaking those down, both of those down to make them kind of understandable and attainable. As far as setting your donation goal or the total amount you want raised, I think it is good to set a goal and have that be on your fundraising page and you can set your page up so it shows that and it shows a progress bar to reaching that. Um, if you're getting close to your goal and you say, oh, gee, I, I might be able to exceed that and raise more, you can during the event go in and increase that, that amount. So if you wanted to get 10,000, you're at 9,900, you can go in and sort of set your, your goal to 15,000. So don't worry about that. Um, when you are putting your page together, and Sarah, I know we're going to talk about a little of this um, as we go on. Think about how you are framing what you're asking for. Um, and if you want, um, you know, if you want to raise $20,000, don't just say we need $20,000. Um, you can communicate what $5 can do, what $10 can do. Because we see so many donors every year in this event who give small amounts of money and give small amounts of money to multiple participants. There are definitely donors who come in and will give $100, some even give 500 or more. But most of the donations coming in we see are, there are a lot of $5 donations, $10 donations, $25 donations. And you definitely wanna keep in mind how you can communicate to a donor. The $10 can make a difference, you know, whether it's buying a certain amount of food or a certain amount of medicine or whatever. Um, just being able to say you can make a difference even with a small amount is important because I think you know donors looking, where can I make my impact? If it just seems like too big and too too general, perhaps um, they, they might they might pass. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Um, so moving on to reviewing your organization page, um, like we were mentioning, this is, you know, your face of the Giving Day for Apes um, event. So this is where you're adding your messaging, your logos, your, you know, your theme colors and everything like that. Um, and this is pretty much the main link you'll share with your supporters apart from your direct donation button link. Uh, but this is where you'll direct everyone to get kind of the, the big picture of your fundraising and your why. Um, so you're going to want to make this as easy to read and informative as you can. Um, a wall of text is always challenging for donors when they come. Nobody really enjoys reading a bunch of text, so you're going to want to be thoughtful when it comes to mixing text, mixing photos, adding a video, making it a more dynamic donor experience when they come to visit your page. They also are going to want to see, um, you know, make it very clear as far as your fundraising goals, what you need, uh, what the money is going towards. That's something that donors are always looking for. They wanna know what they are doing and where the money is going and what it's supporting. Um, and it also gives them an idea when they're thinking about how much that they want to donate. Not every donor comes to a profile knowing specifically how much they wanna give. So adding you know, descriptions and things like that, which is on our next slide, um, uh, as far as like what, you know, certain amounts of money are able to provide for your organization is going to be really helpful. Um, and then 
using this as an opportunity to tell a powerful story uh, about why donors should give to you is going to be really great. Um, we keep coming back to that custom tab. This is, I believe it's, it's fairly new. It's probably maybe like a couple years old, um, but use it. Use the additional custom tab to give additional information, um, whether that's telling a powerful story about a specific ape in your care, whether that's a story about, you know, the fundraising uh, and where the money is going to be going towards um, and or specific programs that you're fundraising. So just use this organization page as an opportunity to clearly lay out uh, your goals and your ask for donors um, and just make it a an experiential visit, you know, add the photos add the videos. Uh, make it, you know, something that or, or that donors come to and they feel inspired to give. Um, and here's kind of the example with the custom tab. Um, so this organization used um, their about section to kind of give their mission to add an inspiring photo. Um, and then the custom tab showed specific stories of apes on their care, which is a really great opportunity for a donor to come to visit to see, you know, the big picture and then to also see specific stories. That's just a very compelling uh, messaging. Um, so again, we keep reiterating what is your message, what is your why, what are your goals, why should someone support you, you're going to want that to be on your page um, somewhere. Um, adding images, mixing up your content, uh, I mean I get joy just looking at these cute little apes here, so that's something that is going to speak to a donor and inspire giving. Um, and then just make a very, you know, strong appeal, and this carries through your donation form. So. Uh, definitely take a moment when you're on your organization page, go to your checkout, go to your donation form and customize donation levels. Um, I see a lot of pages that just have, you know, $10, 25, 20, you know, 50, but it doesn't specify kind of what that amount of money is able to do for your organization. And that can really take a donor from, you know, coming in with $5 to deciding to give 25. Uh, this is really, you know, the one of the final opportunities for you to tell the donor here's what your funds can do for our organization so definitely make sure you go in and customize those descriptions uh, and decide you know what you want the donor to see and check out yeah and um, if i can just add to that 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 was uh, one of the things that I was referring to just a few minutes ago is just break it down so that there's always a small dollar donation amount where you were communicating how that amount can make an impact. And here, you know, it starts with $10, 25, 125, 250. And you may want to make it, you know, depending on your organization, your goals, you might want to make it 10, 25, 50, 100. Um, donors can always type in a different amount and decide to give a different amount. But I think it's really effective, as Sarah said, to not just break down different amounts, but write a little something about what that can do. And the smallest amount is usually something like medicine or food. And people love to feel like they're feeding apes. That's always a very popular form of kind of that crowdfunding uh, fundraising. But um, you think about that with regard to your campaign. Um, so moving into storytelling, this is a really big one. Um, we've talked a lot about it, but I think this is a really great example um, of an organization that did a really nice job with breaking up their content, creating a capelli story, um, even just the branding and the colors and the bolded and the highlighted it really helps break up the information of the story that Grace Girl is, is trying to tell. So as a donor comes to visit the page, uh, they can, you know, their eyes can bop around the page and they can pull out different details um, and really focus in on, you know, mission, uh, fundraising goals um, and stuff like that. And what I thought was interesting also is that as you scroll down the page, they also added an additional link to their donate button so that, you know, the donor doesn't have to scroll back up to the page to donate, which I thought was unique. Um, but storytelling is going to be so key for your campaign. Um, once you have your why, once you have your goals, you really want to make, you know, a lasting impression on the donor. So digging deep into your why with testimonials is really helpful. If you have volunteers who work with you, if you have staff who work with you and you want to get, 
you know, um, a quote from them to add to your page, explain how the work you're doing is affecting others, how it's affecting the apes or even the area that your location is in. Um, identifying a beneficiary of your mission and letting them tell the story is really helpful as well. Um, visitors, supporters, donors to your page, they just love the personal uh, engagement factor when they get to read about something specific, a specific story that someone has about, you know, a day in the life of working at Grace Gorillas, for instance. What does that look like? Adding that kind of connection for a donor is really helpful. Um, but yeah, so helping your donors connect to the beneficiary's story, adding colors, adding headlines, bolded sections, photos, videos are going to be so powerful. Um, and then using your stories, whether that's specific ape stories, whether it's staff stories, um, to just continue to re reiterate and emphasize your why and inform your goals for your campaign. So if your goals for your campaign is to, for instance, you know, raise X number of dollars for X pounds of food, um, you know, maybe you want to have a story that shows the apes eating or you know, being fed, or maybe you talk about an ape and you talk about a specific food that's their favorite because, you know, all the different personalities are play at play. So kind of thinking about your why, your goals, and what kind of storytelling is going to help reiterate the impact towards those goals. Um, and now I'm going to pass it to you, Jackie. Thanks. So the prize that uh, we did want to talk about today is the storytelling prize because it ties into so much of what Sarah was saying. Um, we started this prize two years ago and it's a little different this year. We'll talk about that in more detail in next week's webinar. And um, it also is up on the website now. This is a prize where your organization has to ask to be considered for the prize. Each region uh, will have one winner of $500. And we will be setting up a submission form and I'll let you know when that's available. But if you go to the prize page today, um, when you see this prize description, there is something there that you can download that is a document giving you the guidelines of the prize. And even if you don't uh, wind up submitting your organization's name for the prize, these are good consider considerations. Just thinking about your campaign and how you wanna set up your page. And I've listed some of them here that are on that document. So for example, can a viewer understand the issue being discussed, how it relates to your sanctuary's work? No. Are they feeling an emotional connection? Is there an obvious call to action? Does the story you're telling demonstrate a funding need? And is that obvious? An important one, is the story approachable and easy for the reader or the viewer to understand? Um, you know, we see sometimes, especially where an organization is talking about its work for uh, releasing apes, uh, that a lot of times there's some scientific language being used. And for some donors, that, that's not um, approachable. They don't really understand it on that level. They just want to know you're doing good work and, you know, an ape is returning to their forest home. So think about if there's any jargon, are there any uh, technical terms that maybe you can express in a simpler way uh, for the general donor to understand. And then of course, how images, how other media is being used and how they are enhancing your story and explaining what you do and what your need is. Um, I did also add something that we do have in our terms of participation, um, compliance with the IUCN best practice guidelines for responsible images of non-human primates. And this is important for your uh, Mighty Cause page and for your campaign. Um, you know, it's very important that we use images, whether they be video or photos, that don't suggest uh, that apes can be good pets. Um, and so we discourage any, any images, frankly, showing human contact, certainly no contact with the public, which uh, shouldn't be allowed anyway. But if there, are some, if there are images of caregivers you know, depicting their work of caring for young apes, think about the context of those. Ideally, it should be obvious that they're caregivers in uh, uniform, uh, wearing masks, ideally. And um, if you have any concerns about images or you're not sure, let us know. We do look at everyone's page before we go into early giving. And, we will contact an organization if there's an image that we ask you to really think about 
you know, maybe that can be replaced with another image. But, you know, as Sarah pointed out, our goal in Giving Day for Apes is, is certainly to help you raise funds, but also to raise awareness. And we want to show why apes have to be in sanctuary and the reasons and that we'd like those reasons to end and having responsible imagery is part of that. Okay. Um, alrighty, so once you've, you know, figured out your why, you've built out your page, um, you're going to want to start to think about how to most effectively share your campaigns. So we're going to talk about a couple different uh, marketing channels um, and then some fundraising tools uh, that are available to you. Um, so thinking about your key marketing channels, um, where are your donors at? So not everyone uses social media <clears throat> for their organization, or maybe you don't do direct mail, but you do have a way to communicate with your donors and your supporters. Um, so what does that look like? That's where you're going to want to focus your energy. Um, what's been the most successful for you in the past? Is it, you know, Instagram stories or is it Facebook posts or is it a mix of both? Um, wherever you find your audience to be most responsive, then take your messaging to that channel. It can be really difficult to try to build an audience that you don't necessarily have yet. Say, for instance, you're more focused on Facebook throughout the year, but you think maybe Instagram would be helpful. Um, throw a couple posts up there, but I would not focus your energy on that route if it's not already a success for you. Um, I also want to mention texting. Uh, you as organizations, a part of Giving Day for Apes, have access to text to give. Um, this is available specifically for US and Canadian donors, but if your organization is not in the US or Canada, you can still set up text to give for the donors in those two areas. Um, so feel free to continue to set up text to give. Um, if you haven't used it, you know, in the past uh, last year, then this is a great opportunity for you to try and see. Uh, maybe you know you have a goal of just getting five text to give donors, you know, just to, to try something new and see if this messaging strategy is successful for you. Um, but really just meeting your donors where they're at um, and finding your audience and, you know, sending links and texts and things like that. Um, and then make sure you utilize the uh, participant toolkit. Um, we have uh, some templated emails in there as well to kind of help you start to think about, you know, how to convey messaging, what emails can look like, figure out timelines for emails. Um, and then when it comes to marketing, trying to use some free design tools is really helpful. Um, you can create a lot of things in Canva. And I believe someone on a previous webinar also mentioned that you can create QR codes in Canva now, um, which is cool. So Canva is a free uh, online design tool uh, app pretty much that you can create and set up an account and then you can create uh, like social media posts, you can create templates, which is going to help you save time, uh, which we'll get to in the next slide, the importance of pre scheduling and pre creating a lot of content. Um, so you can come up with a branded theme, you can come up with a frame. Um, these are also really great for you to also provide to your supporters. So when you have a supporter who wants to peer to peer fundraise or you have volunteers or you want to you know, create tools to make it easy for people to share your campaign, Canva is going to be an easy option for you to use. Um, QR codes, these are, you know, if you're new to QR codes, they're those little kind of gridded uh, pictures. And when someone takes a picture, uh, holds up their phone, their smart device, it pulls a website link and so that they can easily access um, the page that you want them to look at. So if you have flyers, for instance, that you're posting or I don't know, mailing or anything like that, any hard copy materials, it's really helpful to add a QR code to them um, so that your donor can easily just scan the QR code and then they can make a donation to your organization. Um, but Again, emphasizing the importance of writing and pre-scheduling your copy. This is going to be so, so helpful for you when it comes to the day of the event and the lead up to the event. Now is the time to pre-schedule, come up with your messaging um, so that you are not in a panic or a rush trying to figure out how to say thank you to a donor, how to you know talk about a match that you had coming up, um, figuring out what emails you need to send or social posts you need to create. Uh, is going to be really helpful, you know, between now and the event. So you have plenty of time to do this. 
Um, but figuring out, you know, okay, I want to send an email during um, early giving, or I want to send two emails during the live event. What do those say? Who's the audience? Um, and then, you know, saving them on your computer or saving them in Gmail so that all you have to do is open it up, copy, paste, fill your donor list, and then click send. Um, and then the same thing with pre-scheduling social posts. Um, you can pre-schedule a lot of content now. You can pre-schedule tweets, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, all of that. Um, so taking the time prior to the event to figure out, okay, I want to do, you know, X number of posts during the live event. Um, what do those look like? Let's build them in Canva so that all we have to do is, you know, post them. And then all you have to do on the live event is work on, you know, real time updates. So that's posting maybe to stories on Instagram or posting a quick update that says, hey, we're halfway to our goal. So exciting. Uh, here's what's left to do. Um, I also have segmenting your audience. So this means, um, you know, if you're sending an email to a, a large donor list, breaking that into segments is going to be really helpful because then you can tailor your messaging to each audience. So if you have in that email list, a volunteer database, um, you know, large donors, donors who gave to your campaign for Giving Day for Apes last year, you can kind of tailor your messaging to each one. Thank you so much to our donor, uh, to our volunteers. Uh, here's our ask of you. Thank you so much to our, you know, you're a large, and you wouldn't probably call them you're a large gift donor, but however you address that group, um, and your messaging would be different than someone who gives, you know, in smaller gift sizes, you want to be sensitive to, you know, what people are able to give and the ask that you're making of them. Um, and then just keeping it simple, um, breaking it out into small kind of pieces. Here's what your gift can do. Making sure to always include your ask. So what do you want them to do when they get your email? What is the overall goal? Don't put so much text that they get lost in what you need them to do or what you're asking or what a gift amount is going to be most helpful during, you know, a power hour, et cetera. Um, and then keeping your call to action very clear. So having a direct button, one button, not 15 links to different parts of, you know, your main website, you're giving me for apes website, keeping it super simple, super streamlined. Um, and being thoughtful that a lot of people are reading on their phones. So, you know, setting up your messaging um, that's short, sweet, uh, to the point, and also mobile friendly is going to be really helpful as you come up with your uh, marketing strategy. Um, and I then we have a yeah, I just want to jump in there about reading on phones. I say this every year, and it is really important. We see um, we can see the number of donors, like the percentage that are doing on desktop versus mobile every year. And the mobile um, percentage gets bigger and bigger every year, just well over half. So be aware that a lot of people are giving on their phones. And when you're setting up your page, look at how it looks on your phone. And you know, ask a couple of your colleagues or friends to look at it on their phones and just see how it looks there. Um, you know, something that may seem like it's not too text heavy when you're looking at a laptop or desktop it may just seem really um, too much <laughs> when looking at it on a phone. And so it is good to, to get a few people's feedback on it, looking on a tablet, looking on a phone, looking on a laptop, um, and seeing how it looks to everyone. That's a very good tip. Um, yeah. I... That's actually a really, really good tip. So pulling up your design on your phone, your organization page and scrolling, are your photos too big? You know, is if say somebody comes to your page and they only have, you know, you have all of 30 seconds to capture their attention, like is your most important messaging what they see first or do they need to scroll for a couple um, bit to get to the, to the most important bit? Um, and then we have utilizing fundraising tools. Um, so as you are planning your campaign, you want to think about how Mighty Cause has different tools available to you during Giving Day for Apes to help you be successful. Um, so several built-in fundraising tools to incorporate into your strategy. We already talked about kind of customizing your donation form. This is going to be really critical to help you continue driving home that why and how much it takes to do different things. Um, also making it accessible to people having you know, small gift amounts, medium, a good mix of large, stuff like that. Um, 
And then these are all found under your fundraising tools on your dashboard, by the way, but we also have uh, matches. So um, we have a page on that next, but when you have a match live, we have a little cute sticker that goes on your donate button so that we can help, you know, advertise that you have a match. Uh, we also have widgets. Um, these are something to help capture donations that might be coming through an external source. That means if you have a website for year round giving and you're worried that donors are going to go there instead of your Giving Bake for Apes page, you can add a widget from Mighty Cause onto your website. So if the, somebody clicks to make a donation through the widget, it will still count towards your Giving Bake for Apes site. Um, that's something to think about. So if you have a donate button somewhere else, on a different website, think about adding a widget um, because only gifts made through Giving Day for Apes are going to count towards those prices. Um, and then we also have awesome peer-to-peer -peer fundraising options, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, we'll probably talk more about matching grants in the next um, webinar that's about prizes and strategy, uh, but big picture matching grants. So these are things that you would secure as an organization. Um, and you can figure out, you know, all the settings for it. You can work with maybe um, the grantor to figure out like how they want the match to impact the event. Um, and I'll say really great people to ask for matching grants. Um, multiple people can come together to fund a match. So if you have, you know, five different, you know, volunteers who want to come together and, you know, gift hundred or two hundred dollars it doesn't have to be a huge amount to be able to take advantage of a matching grant um but the match is going to show on your donate button when it's live it'll be searchable um so if donors come to the giving Day for apes search they can find organizations that have matching grants uh, a lot of donors are interested in figuring out you know how to double their impact or give more or make their dollars go further so those are really helpful um, you can pay the match through the platform as an online gift once it's completed, or you can have your sponsor write you a check, which you can log as an offline donation. I did want to put a reminder that offline gifts don't count towards prizes. Um, you can, of course, add it to your own page totals, uh, but they would need to pay online if you needed uh, the match to count towards gifts. Um, but a little more on matching grants. Um, one, another person, great to ask if you have a recurring large gift giver, that would be a good person to probably say, hey, you know, you donate uh, this much money, or maybe they have told you they want to gift this much money this year. You can say, could we leverage that as a match this year to try to get additional donations and inspire other donors to give. So that's another thought as where to, to um, secure a match. And I just wanted to add in the participant toolkit document, we do have some FAQs on matching grants as well. So that might um, be useful if you're thinking about how to set that up and how to make sure um, that it could count towards your leaderboard totals if those matches are made as online donations. Um, and then we also have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising um, as a wonderful way to kind of share your campaign. Um, so basically peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it's a fundraising technique that is going to leverage existing supporters to bring in new donors and new donations to your organization. So ideally, um, your supporter is setting up a peer-to-peer -peer page for you. Um, and I'll show you, I can leave on another side how to get that set up. Um, but basically, they'll set up a page, they'll have their own direct URL link. When someone clicks to donate on their page, those funds are going to directly be added to your leaderboards, to your organization totals. So it's really a really wonderful opportunity for you to cast your net into a wider group of people. Um, and it's an impactful way to ask a uh, supporter to help you out in a non-monetary way. So you can ask them, you know, hey, you know, of course, obviously you still would like a donation, but if people are unable to give or they want to do this in addition, this is a unique way for them to emphasize how much they care about the work that you're doing and then share it with their family, their friends, their colleagues, um, and try to help you raise money during the event. Um, and like I said, they share their direct fundraising page, and then those donations are automatically counted towards your organization totals during the event. Um, benefits of peer-to-peer, -peer, if you're on the fence about it or you're not sure if it's worth the effort, um, this is a really wonderful way to get new donors. So donor acquisition, key. 
Peer-to-peer -peer is going to help you expand your donor base. You're going to be able to reach donors that you did not have access to previously. So if you have a goal of getting, you know, 10 new donors during this year's event, this is going to be a great way for you to try to reach a new audience. Um, it helps you spread the word. You're able to have other people spread your word for you so they can talk to their work. They can ask to their family. They can ask their friends. They can you know, spread the word in general about your organization, even if people, you know, don't donate, they're still hearing about your work, and maybe they will come to your website in time, and they will start to become a donor through that route. Um, also deepening relationships with your existing supporters. Peer-to-peer, um, -peer, it gives an existing donor a fun and exciting new way for them to show support for your cause. Um, and peer-to-peer -peer can be everything from uh, you know, setting up a page and sharing a link or just sharing your organization page link. So when you're setting up your emails and you're drafting messaging, you can always ask them, hey, uh, ways to support us, set up a peer to peer page or uh, share our direct organization page link on the day of the event. Um, you know, post it to your Facebook, say this organization is fundraising. Um, I really care about them a lot. And here's the link to learn more about them. Um, super easy to set up. Organizations can manage through campaigns, fundraising tools, campaigns. You can also see who has set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for you. Um, you can see if they're still active. If you have out-of-date campaigns, you can go to your campaign dashboard and you can hide them. So only relevant campaigns are showing this year. Um, you can also create a fundraiser template to make it easy for onboarding of peer-to-peer -peer supporters. You can pre-fill a logo, you can pre-fill uh, text for their page, and then they can go in and they can customize it um, in addition to what you have added. But if somebody wants to peer-to-peer -peer fundraise for you, all you'll have them do is go to your organization page and click the fundraise button, and they'll be prompted to get started. Um, and they can use the template provided by your organization, and then they just click build fundraiser, and then they can take it from there. Um, we're getting close on time and I want to make sure we have time for uh, questions. So uh, just real briefly, a general communication timeline as you're getting ready, planning and sharing. Um, communications to keep in mind. Uh, we have this broken into kind of comms for donors during the event and then also a list of groups that you might want to reach out to uh, that might just not be donors. Um, as far as donors, sending a save the date once you're registered, letting them know you're participating, to mark the calendar. Um, once early giving has started, sending an email or making social posts saying, hey, early giving is open. Um, here's a button to donate. During the live event, you'll want to send an email letting them know if any prizes are on the table for you, if you have any matches that are coming up or are live. Um, and then sending a reminder email to anybody who has not given yet, who maybe has previously given during your campaign last year. So I have here using your retention report. Um, and we also mentioned that I think in the first webinar, um, but if you need help finding this, you can reach out to our support team. But if you previously participated, you have access to a retention report. So during the day, add it into your calendar to you know somewhere midday, somewhere towards the end of the day, to pull this report to see uh, who you could reach out to to get a little bit more momentum to remind them say hey during 2022 you supported our giving day for eves campaign the day the event is live uh, you know make your gift here um, so definitely add that to your to do list um, and then think about other communications outside of just donor communications, how do you want to get peer-to-peer -peer supporters involved. Who is the audience? Who are you going to chat to? Maybe make it a goal to talk to two people, two volunteers to get peer-to-peer -peer pages set up this year. Um, it doesn't have to be all in, 100 peer-to-peer -peer pages set up. Make your goals small and achievable. Um, and then next year, you know, you'll have the foundation in place so that you can start to do more peer-to-peer -peer fundraising because Truthfully, organizations that utilize peer to peer, they raise more than organizations that don't. It's just that's naturally how it is because you're casting a wider net. Um, also, comms for donors, uh, sorry, volunteers, communications for any employees, how they can get involved, how you can share messaging that they can share with their friends and family, um, and then any sponsors. So, if you have a goal to get a couple sponsors, um, what does that look like? What kind of messaging? When do you need to start talking to people to try to 
you know, get sponsors involved in your campaign. Um, and then, of course, our resources and support are fabulous. Uh, Jackie's been talking about the participant toolkit that's on the Giving Me for Leap site. It has a ton of instructions on how to build a campaign. Um, we have, you know, you can register for the third webinar, which is next week, I believe, um, August 24th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, that's going to be kind of a deeper dive into prizes and strategy. Um, and then, of course, your asset library is accessible through um, the side panel pop up. Um, you can review the webinars. That's where this one will be posted and check back every time you log in just to see if there's new announcements. Um, and I want to reiterate, if you have not registered, make sure you register. Um, you can see your registration status by logging into your organization page and on the left hand side of your dashboard clicking overview. It'll say at the top whether or not you're registered. Um, if you previously participated but you haven't registered, it'll say Giving Day for Apes registration is open. You can click there to register. Um, and if it's impending, it'll also let you know that status. Um, but yeah, make sure you register if you are on this and have not. Uh, I'm going to pass it back to you, Jackie. Okay. Well, I know we're getting it towards the end of the hour. And um, I just encourage everyone to sign up for next week's webinar. We have some new prizes. Uh, this is the 10th year of Giving Day for Apes. And so we're kind of excited about some of the new prizes. And we'll talk about all of those. There are a lot more opportunities for um, organizations of all sizes to win golden tickets and other randomly awarded prizes. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and, and campaign strategy when we talk about prizes, but I just say, following up on what Sarah said, you know, think about um, who you work with all the time and who might, you know, during giving day or leading up to giving day, share your page on your social media. I know a lot of sanctuaries um, partner in different respects with, with zoos, or you might have corporate sponsors. And this is a time to just say, hey, you know, would you share, share my my link to my organization's Giving Day for Apes page. Um, even if they're not donating, it's another way to expand your audience. So think about that as you're putting your campaign together. Awesome. Well, if anyone has any questions, you can throw those over now. We have a couple minutes. Um, or you're all welcome to um, revisit this uh, once we get it uploaded to the asset library um, you can download the slides um, make sure you check out those resources and if you have any questions whatsoever please feel free to reach out to our mighty cause support team um, you can access them uh, nine to five eastern monday to friday uh, 24 hours on the giving day for apes live event um, but it's support at mightycause.com thanks everyone all right, bye.